What is up, Watch Fam? Happy Friday, and welcome to Liquor Run. I am Christian from Theo and Harris, and you are Rolly from Theo and Harris. If you guys aren't familiar with Liquor Run, uh, it's a Friday series at Theo and Harris where I bring a topic of conversation in the watch world, uh, and my dad brings a bottle of wine, and uh, and we just we just kick back and enjoy. That's right. So let's do it. Let's do it. Okay, so today we're going to be talking about uh, Piaget's celebration uh, of the 60th anniversary of one of their probably most famous watches. Uh, not the Polo, but the Altiplano. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the 60th birthday, and they've done a couple of things that we'll talk about. But uh, first, we'll do a quick wristwatch check. So what are we wearing? There she is again. Beautiful. I love it. Cameo. Yep, 40th birthday gift from mom. If you guys aren't That's familiar right. with it, we actually did a video specifically on the story uh, of that watch, right? Long time ago. Which was your first Rolex. It was my first Rolex. Yep. Uh, geez, 12 years ago? Very sentimental. Unbelievable. Yeah, we did a whole video on yeah, it. Yeah, uh, 12 years ago. It was a ago. great video. Uh, it was called Watch People and Wine. We really should bring back that series. It's just uh, it's just hard. But uh, but yeah, you guys should definitely take a look. Uh, the link is in the description. I think you guys really enjoy seeing my dad uh, talk about the story. Anyway, uh, I am wearing uh, a vintage Rolex reference. 1601. Uh, I'm actually wearing it on our video editor uh, Anna's uh, strap. This is actually an Hermes double tour strap. Uh, we are without a doubt more loyal and uh, bigger fans of Jean Rousseau, uh, which is the straps that we have in the watch shop. But there was one time we went Hermes, uh, and this was that time. I think it looks a little bit ridiculous on my wrist, uh, but uh, but it's pretty cool nonetheless. Okay, so so what are we doing? Uh, well, we're gonna. Chat a little bit about Piaget. We're going to talk about this. Very good pronunciation. Thank you very much. That's I'm good with uh, French. <laughs> um, and and coincidentally, yep. we're going to drink a French wine. Ooh, okay, <laughs> very cool. What are we drinking? So we're drinking a Cru Bourgeois. Okay. Uh, Bordeaux, red wine. Okay. It's uh, Cabernet. Okay. And um, and we we picked this up because tell tell everyone why we picked it up. We picked it up because um, wine library does these special deals, like these flash sales, that last for only a day. And uh, this particular one was selling for about, I think $16.99 is the regular price, and they did a like a, an eight-hour sale for 10 bucks. Yep. So we picked up a couple of bottles. We just opened up. We started, we didn't bother with uncorking today yep. because we're going to be talking about so many other things. But, and, and, but this is a simple, simple wine. Uh, like I said, it's a Cabernet. Uh, from Bordeaux, it just tastes so different than a Cabernet made here in the U.S. Really, it's completely different. It doesn't have the jamminess that I that you've heard me talk about before, uh, and um, and uh, it, to me, it's a lot more straightforward. I like it because it's got restrained fruit. Okay, um, but I don't. Do you want me to go into a little bit more well, about let's Bordeaux? Go into, let's go into the watches for a second. Okay, and then yeah. We'll, we'll revisit the okay, wine. Okay, so sure. I think birthday celebrations are something that I find very interesting. Mm -hmm. um, I think that that anniversaries of of things at big companies should be should be you know given a lot of thought. You know, if you're going to throw a party, it better be a good party. Yeah. Especially when your budget is a couple hundred million dollars. Uh, so in this instance, a Piaget was celebrating the 60th anniversary of their Altiplano. Do right. you? I, you're not 60, you know, but but do you remember? <laughs> but do you remember Piaget growing up? I mean, was that a brand that you remember the the polo? Yeah, I do. Solid gold hunks, you know. You don't have to lead the witness. I remember Piaget quite well. Uh, I, I I remember Piaget for the they were almost like wafer thin, hundred percent. And that's what I do remember Piaget. Uh, I, I remember. You know, living on Staten Island, seeing a lot of the people there yeah. were wearing Piaget, which is gold a wonderful Piagets. Point. Wonderful point, Piaget, and I knew you were going to bring this up because it's it's so true. It's it's so true. Piaget started off, mm -hmm. um, at least as I understand it, as a very very classic traditional Swiss company with ultra fine movements, like a real traditional Swiss you know watchmaker. And then somewhere in the 70s or 80s, Piaget became very, very blingy. Mm -hmm. We actually have one in the shop right now. It, mm -hmm. it features the 9P movement, which was, I believe, uh, one of the first ultra-thin, ultra-thin hand-winding watches, right? We actually have it right here. Okay, so take a look at this. I mean, this is not a gaudy watch. No, you know, it's not. It's white gold. Uh, it definitely has a little bit of 70s style in the shape. Yes, almost like a television. Exactly. Oh, that's very, very good. Very good, very good observation, actually. Like, yeah, Sony Trinitron. Yeah, oh, very cool. So uh, so this kind of really is, is what Piaget, well, this is kind of a transitional piece, okay? But then Piaget became the brand that you kind of remember. 
right? Yes. Which was really micro thin, but, but gold, gold, a lot of gold, a lot of gold, and all you saw was a Piaget. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah. and gold bracelets, right? Yes, uh, yes, gold bracelets. Like, yes. like wealthy people watches, you know, yeah, and they were, yeah. you know, not they, necessarily you had to be wealthy, but they cost a ton of money yeah. and they were definitely a status symbol. Yes. You know, which was kind yeah. of the antithesis of what the brand, you know, dare I say, was supposed to be, you know. But it had a certain cachet, you know, in For certain sure. worlds. For in, in certain, in certain yeah. worlds, but I don't think in like Geneva. You know, you know, in that traditional Swiss watch world, a little bit, a mm -hmm. little bit too blingy. Mm -hmm. uh, so Piaget is now celebrating the 60th anniversary of one of their most classic watches, mm -hmm. you know, the Altiplano. Uh, so a couple of months ago, maybe even beginning of this year, they released a series of the new Altiplanos. Mm -hmm. uh, these are in blue. They came in brown. Like they come that. in green. They come in a ton of colors. Uh, and I think that these are pretty classy watches. You know, this is 38 millimeters, and that one was 43, I believe. That's big. So, the, the 38 is the right size, yeah. in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, and I think that this was a pretty, you know, decent way to celebrate that anniversary. Um, but what's interesting now is they just released a pocket watch. And take a look at that here. Obviously the same, you know, the same watch. The same Like watch. I just showed you. But... In 50 millimeters, and at least here in the marketing material, they're showing it in your, in your hand, kind of pulling it out of your pocket. You know, kind of weird, right? Limited edition? 26 pieces. Okay, so micro production. Right, yeah. Um, so I guess they're appealing probably to the most loyal Piaget customer. No doubt. And um, I think for, for, a, for a desk piece... If you were a serious, Ooh, a, serious Piaget person, that would be awesome. This is like it's yeah. it's like a trophy. Yes, owning this would be like yes. saying, "Yep, I've been loyal to this brand yes. for. I'm a VIP at Piaget. Right. I own one of twenty six. Right. When you come into my office, that's just another piece to show you kind of how important I am. You know, even if you don't realize it, it may go over your head. Mm -hmm. But uh, but that that's a that's a pretty exclusive group of people. Twenty six. Yeah, that's uh, obviously. Not not uh, big scale at all. Um, uh, however, I do question the whole, you know, the sizing and 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 uh, uh, pocket watch concept. Because are yeah. they uh, have they ever produced a pocket watch? I uh, good question. I would imagine at some point. Uh, I, I good question. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to say I would imagine at some point in their history, Piaget right. did. Uh, they were founded in the 19th century, so yeah, I would say definitely they did. Uh, but the Altiplano was not a pocket watch. I was going to say, you know, yeah, so yeah, whether yeah, Piaget right. ever produced right. one is a different story. Right. But it's odd that you know this would be. And once again, I understand mm -hmm. it. You know, I understand this like what I just said. This would be a perfect piece on your desk that says, "I am a Piaget loyal, yeah. you know, and valued customer." Yeah. Uh, but it is funny, right? Because yeah. really, there's really very little pocket watch history uh, on the matter. Do you remember segueing a little bit? Do you remember what Patek Philippe did for the anniversary of the Nautilus? Remember, remember, I ranted about it a couple times. Uh, they, they released a white gold Nautilus with a blue dial, or white gold or platinum Nautilus with a blue dial. Yes. But it had like the the years on, like almost like a tombstone. Like I'll show you a photo right now. Right. Weird, right? Yes. Weird, isn't yes. that weird? Yes. That yes. was ugly. Yeah. I mean, why would they put forty? I mean, <laughs> it's over the top. It's it's gratuitous. Baguette diamonds all around, you know, which apparently are pretty discreet in reality. But to me, those that that tombstone numbering is just yeah. so ugly. Yeah, that's a good way of saying you it. Know. A tombstone numbering. Yeah, but I think Piaget did a better job than Patek in this instance. So I don't, I don't uh, necessarily, I don't hate that. No, neither do I. I, uh, I understand. I, I think, uh, I think, it, I think they're just playing right to their very, very. The, the, the truest customer, mm -hmm. and they're hoping that they can sell twenty six of them yeah. just to commemorate. Oh, they them will and, sell twenty six. And, 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 and I'm maybe sure. uh, um, it's an it's a it's an odd concept. Yep. To say the least, yeah, I I agree with you, uh, in that a a uh, a desk clock, yeah, Alti Plano desk and clock think, would have been wonderful. And I think they do they kind of do pitch it like that a little bit. Okay, but a desk clock, sure, you know, it's not technically that. Sure, oh, I see it what they've done. Yeah, watch, though, it, yeah, know. it's a fifty millimeter pocket watch. Yeah, that I guess you could put on your desk, right? Or hang. Within some, it's interesting. Yeah, yeah, the whole thing is interesting. Once again, I don't think PJ did a bad job. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I, I don't think they did a bad job. I would love to know you what know? they're going to charge for this. Oh, at twenty six, I didn't see the price release. Yeah. I didn't see it, and you got to yeah. imagine that they're going to really, you know, it's going to be. It's gonna be a hefty price tag, right? Uh, but uh, but that's it. I you know, like I said, I, I didn't like Patek at all. So I kind of I, I use like Piaget now and Patek and the way Rolex is, has celebrated anniversaries 
uh, I, I I like comparing the brands. Right. You know, uh, Rolex is. 45th, I think, or 50th anniversary gift to themselves was the Date Just and the Jubilee bracelet. Like, that's innovative. You know, that's celebrating a birthday or that's celebrating an anniversary, you know. And I think that they set a really, really high marker. Um, and it's interesting to see how other brands kind of fall. Hmm. We'll see. We'll see how it works out. I, I, love, I would love to hear a little bit more about this. Well, by the way, when is it? Be, when is it deploying? When, uh, when is I, I it don't know. Out? I is think it that it's probably already. It's probably already out there. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I really don't know. It's not it, offensive. No, at no all? not at all. No, yeah, it's just it, interesting. It's just yeah. an interesting concept. Yeah. And let's jump yeah. into the wine a little so, quick, real quick. But, before, we but end. before we even talk about the wine, I want to make a, a correction because I know I'll get hammered on uh, on, on on YouTube comments. Piaget is not French. I kind of you know it sounded French. I know, but they but, uh, but, but don't they Swiss, speak French in Switzerland? Is that um, insulting? They, 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 oh, yeah, they speak French, German. Ah, so I want to just respond to the people, the haters right now. They do speak French. <laughs> okay, let's jump into uh, the wine anyway. real quick. What do we got? I was talking to you a little bit about uh, Cru Bourgeois. Yep. So they, in 1855, they, they came up with this classification system, and they are basically a pecking order, right, of, of classified growth. Mm-hmm. You know, you've got uh, um, you Grand Cru and, you know, uh, and in, 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 so growth, so like that very top, second growth, third growth, fifth growth, fifth, you know, et cetera. And then you've got this Cru Bourgeois. Um, over the years, uh, there's been some legal wrangling about, uh, about this uh, Cru Bourgeois. Uh, but, but, but today, this, still, this represents a fantastic opportunity to try Bordeaux. This wine happens to be about 65% Cabernet. 37% Merlot, okay? So it's not a single varietal, all right? Uh, by the way, Bordeaux, by and large, is always a blend. So it's not it's not a, it's not a single grape wine. It was blending involved. Yeah. Okay, so you're touching, a, a, you know, two grapes here. Yeah. Uh, and, and it's funny how, how it expresses itself and how it's vinified and ultimately, you know, put into a bottle and what it tastes like. Uh, but, but there's always a recipe. In some parts of Bordeaux, and I'm not going to get too technical, the the Merlot pre- is is predominant, but that's that's a minority. Typically, it's Cabernet based. Um, for what we paid for this wine, yeah, for ten I mean, bucks, it's, it's a steal. Yeah, but ten bucks it's is a steal, steal right? and you get to taste what French, you know, ca- the, the, these international varietals, you know, mm-hmm. Cabernet and Merlot, what they taste like. It made in France. What do you think at sixteen bucks or whatever it was? Do you think it's still a good uh, value prop? Oh, that's a great question, man. I, I know wow. when, when you saw it drop to ten, you told me immediately go buy it. You know. Yeah. So I, I think based on how it's drinking you, you, right now, I yeah. think it's still a good deal. Okay. At it 16. is. Yeah, at sixteen is it's definitely a good deal because it's hard to find, uh, in my opinion, and please correct me if I'm wrong, but it's hard to find a, a wine that has the level of restraint or the, the I I've got, I'll go back to. The gratuitous fruit, the yep. jamminess. If you love that type of wine, then I'm not talking to you. Then we we're on a two different planes. Right. But if if you if you like if you're someone that enjoys the old world style of winemaking, I think this has it. And this has nice fruit. It just has good acidity, mm-hmm. you know, to balance that fruit. So cool. for me, that's right in my wheelhouse. I think it's quite tasty. And we don't drink a lot of Cabernet here no, in this no, house. No, really not at all. We drink yeah. more, uh, you know, uh, we drink more Sangiovese, some Chianti. We drink more Spanish wines. Yep. And, you know, that's that's where we yeah, go. This is not typical. It's no. not typically being poured. But yeah. I, I'm enjoying it. Though. I think this is a really nice, really nice glass of wine. Uh, it's it's super, um, you know, drinkable. Of course, it's drinkable. It's wine, but I feel like it's it's not. Um, uh, not aggressive by any means. It's, it's not. Just a tasty no. glass of it wine. It is. You know? And and the 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 big take home here is that go out explore Bordeaux. Mm-hmm. There there are a lot of there are a lot of good wines out there. People think Bordeaux or they think Burgundy. They're thinking it's you know it's a gold Rolex. It's it's a, a Long and Son. You know it's just the the creme de la creme. Yep. But there are so many good small producers making some you know some village wines if you will yep. and uh, great quality. But you know they don't have a voice, right? And so, so, and they don't have the they, they haven't reached the level of that classified growth. Right. So they sit down here, yeah. but it doesn't mean that they're making bad wine. Yeah, that's interesting. That's a beautiful thing, yeah. and that's a great opportunity for you as a consumer to go out and try Bordeaux and snag them when they're relatively unknown and cheap. Absolutely. That's so there's cool. good everyday drinking yeah. with Bordeaux. I definitely recommend it. You were you got me excited. For yeah. You. You texted me. Pick up this bottle of wine. Pick them up. Know. We bought three. Yeah. And uh, I don't know. I, I'm stoked about it. I think it's really tasty. It's in it for this time of year, especially. Mm. I wouldn't drink this in the summer. No. Right no, no, now. No. Right now. 
now it's, it's going to be phenomenal. What we're going to be doing later on tonight. For sure, can't wait. Daddy so, yo, thank you so all right, much. For good, having uh, me. good episode here. Absolutely. I enjoyed this conversation. Piaget, good job. You didn't, you didn't like totally blow us away, but mm-hmm. you did a good job. And I think that the twenty six people who are lucky enough, yeah, uh, to buy these watches, yeah. uh, these buy these pocket watches, are going to uh, are going to be pretty stoked. Uh, to see that on their desk every day. You know what also is cool? One extra note is like on a desk clock, on a pocket watch, there is no competition. You will always have that on your desk. Yes. Whereas with a watch, you're always swapping out. You know, every day is a, every day is a different thing with yeah, these you're guys. Right. But that Piaget, yeah. Yeah, now that I'm thinking about it, yeah. I don't even know if they intended that, but now that I'm thinking about it, that's actually a really interesting idea. But that's it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Happy Friday. Uh, please subscribe to this channel and like this video if you enjoyed our conversation. Uh, cheers, guys. Have a great weekend. I will see you all tomorrow. Cheers. Cheers.